Hey, so today we're gonna to make some more ambient music and we're gonna use samples as our starting point for this project. Let's jump in. So as usual, we've got a blank project to start with and I already saved it. I recommend you do the same so that you have your stuff in a directory you are happy with. I'm gonna open a new track and I'm gonna bring in a sample. I've got this sample of a cello. Let's listen to it real quick. I'm actually gonna turn my click track off and I have that keyed to a button on my keyboard. If you wanna do that, you can add your own keyboard shortcuts in here. I hit shift question mark or I went up to the actions menu and chose show action list. So this is a good starting point. And what I wanna do is a little bit of sound design to combine that with some other things before I load it into a sampler. So on a new track, which Reaper's gonna make for me when I drag in audio, I'm gonna bring in this other recording of a scroll, sort of a Foley recording that I made. Combine, let's hear them. So not a lot yet, but we can do a little bit of magic and find a good way of combining the two sounds. I'm gonna stretch out the scroll a little bit. I'm holding Alt and dragging once the cursor becomes a hand. And I'm gonna fade in this cello a little bit. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. And I'm gonna chop off the end of it. Stretch it out more. And I really want to make sure that transient is soft. Not especially happy with it, but we're going to work with it. I'll do a new track. I'm going to record the output of both of these. So to do that, we can just route both of these tracks by clicking and dragging this route. If you don't see that, it might be in your mixer down here. You can also click it and choose your routing destination and add new send. Once I do that, I'm gonna right click on the record button and I'm going to record output stereo. I'll arm the track to record, and then I'm going to hit record. I'm going to delete these two tracks now, and start with this one, which I can load into a sampler on a new track. I'll hit the effects and load in a sampler. If I click on this, I can import that from the range, and then what I can do is turn on loop and I can set the bounds of the sample in a crossfade region so that only the cello and not the transient thing at the beginning are going to loop. I'm also going to set the max voices down to four and I'm going to obey note off. So that's going to be really important if you don't want to get obliterated by eight instances of the sample playing at the same time. I'm also going to set this to note semitone shifted so that the keyboard or the MIDI notes that I input are going to change the pitch. Let's hear that now. I think that on second thought, I do want that transient at the beginning of the sample. So I'm gonna start it a little bit later and I'm going to give it a little bit of decay. And now I've got that sound. It's kind of an interesting, almost a cymbal combined with a cello. Okay, I'm relatively happy with that as a starting point. Let's hear how the loop feels if I hold the key down. It's not too bad. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of reverb to this sound. Sounds pretty good. The next thing I'm noticing that the low notes on my keyboard are just almost inaudible. It's a pretty cool sound but I think I might raise the starting pitch by 12 semitones or a full octave. So minus 69, it's gonna go up to minus 57. The 
the next step here is to come up with some type of a note sequence. I'm gonna delete this first track since we're not using it anymore, and I'm gonna name this one Sampler 1. The next thing I'm gonna do here is to make a MIDI sequence. And this MIDI sequence is going to contain the same note over and over again. So once I have this sequence of notes, I can use a randomizer. So I'm gonna choose MIDI modal randomness. Now if I play it back, there's no change yet, um, but we can adjust some of these settings to create something that's at least somewhat interesting. Quantize targets for beat, maybe we'll do two. And the reason there's no change yet is because this is happening after the sampler. So the sampler is taking the MIDI in. It's gonna sound pretty weird when I first put this on. Well, let's go over here and brace yourself. We're gonna to need to adjust this quite a bit. I'm gonna set the number of simultaneous notes down to two. I'm gonna set the quantized targets for beat down to two so they play slower. That's gonna play essentially two notes for each click instead of four notes per click. And I'm going to adjust these intervals so that we have something that sounds a little bit nicer. I'm gonna choose a seventh for this one. This is a scale degree, so like, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So, dun, 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 dun. Which sounds kind of nice. It's a major seven chord. And I'm gonna set the probability of these down quite a lot. So 20, 15, maybe 10, and five as a starting point. Let's hear this now. Sounds pretty bad. That's always a good starting point. Let's adjust our project's tempo. That's off screen, but you're gonna find it in one of the corners. I keep mine on top. Yours is probably in the middle or the bottom somewhere if you're in Reaper. I'm gonna set it to 40 beats per minute. Now let's hear that. I'm gonna set the octave randomness to zero. Bring the timing randomness down and up, see what they feel like on both ends. And now I'm going to allow more notes at a time. Now I'm going to set the probability down to 60 here. Now sometimes that won't play. And it's still a bit low, so I'm going to raise it another octave. Go to minus 45. Okay, that's a nice starting point. And now I'm going to bring in another sound. I'm going to bring in this recording of a gong. I'm going to bring it over here so we can hear it on its own. Okay, and now I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to take this middle part Get rid of the rest, and I'm going to stretch this out quite a lot. And I'm going to go in with an EQ, carve out quite a lot of everything with a band pass filter, and I'm going to make that bandwidth quite narrow. Okay, and I'm going to choose something like 440 that's going to be in tune with a note.
And for the bandwidth, I'm going to keep going smaller until I really hear that note come out. Mm, you hear it? Now that I've got that, I'm going to fade the edges of this a bit and add a little bit of reverb to it. Okay, and that's sounding pretty good to me. I'm gonna feed this into a track again and record the output. Now that I've got that, I can get rid of this track and make another sampler. This sampler will have this as its uh, source material, import from a range. And this time, if you wanna keep this in case you wanna edit more, you can just mute the item. That's Alt M on a PC. Move it out of your way. I'm going to do the same thing here where I obey note offs and I set the max voices quite a bit lower. I'm going to choose four for now. I'm going to choose note semitone shifted and record arm it and drive my MIDI controller. Now it has just a hint of that pitch. So um, I'm going to turn loop on and I'm going to adjust our loop bounds a little bit. I'm gonna bring this in a little bit further so that this sound will sort of move on forever. Let's hear what that sounds like. That's where the repeat is happening. I think it sounds pretty good. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another MIDI item here. And I'm just copying that first one down. And grab that starting pitch. And I'm just going to make a really long note here. Let's hear these together. It's not going to sound good. It's sort of the warning. But this needs to be on, I guess. And that first one's obviously quite loud, comparatively. So we're gonna bring the volume over down. And recognize that this sound is probably too low to hear. First one's still quite loud. Great. And now what I want to do is to add randomization to this one. And the randomness I'm going to add to this one is going to be through the probability here. So it's going to play sometimes, most of the time. And we're going to choose a lot of different notes. Let's just do a little bit less and keep it uh, easy to keep track of. And then let's hear these together. Let's we'll start from somewhere in the middle. And as this plays back, actually I'm gonna let it loop. I'm going to start exploring some sound design on this first one. 
using delays. And we'll notice that this sampler isn't playing all the time. So we need to sort of figure out why that might be. That's because of the probability. I realized I didn't, I don't like that and I want it to always be playing. I think that reverb should happen after the delay. Now I'm thinking I want these to be more in tune with each other. So what I'm gonna do here is turn off the modal randomness, turn this track back on, Turn the delay off, and now I'm going to test them against each other. So, they're quite a bit off from each other. Um, and to solve that problem, I'm going to adjust the pitch of this sampler too, to match. That's probably about right. Let's see how that sounds. This one feels like it needs some kind of a reverb. So these trails bleed over each other. And this one feels like it needs some kind of a filter. pretty aggressive, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe this could use less mid-range. bit of gentle mixing. And a little bit of top end filtering on that second sampler.
and I'm realizing that I really want the notes to come out of that first sampler more. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of support with a synth. So it sounds like this is the sampler. Is about a third higher than the synth. I'm gonna go to town on that and I'm gonna match it with this other sampler. Cool. I'm gonna bring this other stuff back in now and play it again. And I want this synth to be like little plucks at the beginning, part of that transient. So I'm gonna set the decay really short and the sustain level to be quite quiet. And I might even tune it up an octave. So I'm gonna go up 1200 cents. And then a big part of ambient music is just leaving it alone and seeing how you feel about it. I still don't like this, but I haven't decided what I don't like about it yet. I think it's this creepy gong. <laughs> Decide what to do with that. Less low end, probably. I think it's too much in the middle, too. You know what I might do? Is make this high end move around. So what I think I'll do here is to copy this EQ and I'm going to make one of them move around on the left channel and one of them move around on the right channel. Using parameter modulation. And I'll turn the strength down, the starting point up a little bit. And the speed down a bit too. Okay, once I've got that, I'm gonna set the output only output on one channel. I'm going to do the same thing on the other track, but I'm going to do it on the opposite side. I'm going to adjust the phase to make sure they're not happening at the same time, even though the speed is different. Um, and then I'm going to go into the output. I'm going to make this only output on the other side. I'm 
one without that. It's kind of a mess with it. It's a little bit softer. Um, on that first sampler, I'm feeling more and more like I want the starting point to be a little bit uh, later. with a slower attack. after everything and take out more of that dry signal. And now I've softened up that first one, I'm going to adjust our mix a little bit here. position a little bit as well of that synth specifically probably um, let's actually have the synth output onto a different track so if we make a new track here we can um, send the synth output to new channels and send those channels here. So this should be receiving from sampler one. <laughs> okay, that should work. Um, No, this track is just a synth. This is going back into the master bus. And this one's going to have separate uh, panning rules. Let's do... basically just doubled um but um i'm gonna pull a filter down really hard on both of them and do sort of the same thing so they're gonna pop out on the left and right channels at different times this 
this time I'm gonna use a random LFO. Sink it. Turn the strength low enough so it's filtering below where the note is most of the time. And do the same thing on the other channel. That's the wrong parameter. That's what this sounds like now. Take some low end out of both of these two. And then let's add another pan on top of it, why not? the probability of all these. A slow melody on top with another sample. Sounds 
that's pretty good. I'm gonna adjust our uh, envelope here a little bit. Okay, that actually sounds pretty good right now. We don't really need to obey note offs on this one because it's such a short sample. Um, stretch to this reverb actually. to soften this up a little bit. This I'm going to modulate based on amplitude. for the reverb. Let's 
Sounds pretty good. project down actually. So I'm going to slow the tempo down and go half the speed. And now I'm going to play again from the beginning um, and see how this feels. too extreme. I'm going to speed it back up, split the difference. I'm starting to feel like that first sample was the wrong place to start. And that's okay. You just want to start somewhere. I always find that the stuff that I think sounds bad is more inspirational than the stuff that sounds good because I always want to fix it. <laughs> this is flux. I'm going to make that um, extreme I think that reverb even longer.
Maybe just another EQ. idea with this first sampler and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to significantly adjust what it's what it's doing. I'm going to give it a very very slow attack and a long release. Oops. And I'm going to give it um give it another chance. Quite a bit less probability, too. And I think I want the high end of this gong to swirl around a little bit. So I'm gonna mute the track first because it's gonna get a pretty aggressive sounding. Um, and I'm gonna drag routing down here. And I'm going to pull up an EQ that's only gonna have the high end. I'm gonna unmute the track now. I'm actually gonna shelf the high end a little bit. Give it a ping pong pan. I'm gonna EQ out some of that high end from this version of the track too. around actually randomly that's pretty cool And I'm noticing the whole track kind of has a mid-range frequency buildup. And I might just handle that on the master bus here. Just gently pull out some mid-range here, some something on the on the lower end of the mid-range. point too so it just keeps playing right now okay the next thing we can do here is a little bit of arranging um, I'm just gonna double this and I'm gonna take out some of these sounds from the beginning maybe this much of it or a little bit at the beginning So I'll just have that come in a little late too. So now we've got a starting point is, let's see. Yep, 
you know, I actually want those cello notes to last quite a bit longer, so I'm going to make the release really, really long. There we go. And actually, I don't think I want the cello right at the beginning. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, open up the track envelopes. And I'm going to find that sampler here. And I'm going to automate um, the bypass on it. I'm just going to leave that sampler bypassed for maybe that first section there. Let's hear this now. to be a, a really wide stereo reverb on the plucks. Now we're hearing everything come in. And you can just let that go for a while. Go read a book, have a cup of coffee, whatever you want. <laughs> tea get cold. Something else I like to do is um, pick a sound that you like and just play along with it a little bit. Let's see. drowning in it. for a little bit and I'll record it and see if I come up with anything that I like.
All right, let's jump back in here and make some edits to that performance. I think I really liked a lot of that. Um, at the end there, I uh, came into the automation here and turned off that sampler again and let everything sort of die out naturally. The next step, which I'm going to spare you in this video, would be sort of listening through all of this and making minor adjustments and uh, editing out the parts that you didn't think sounded great. But overall, I thought it was a, a pretty decent uh, take and I am relatively happy with the result. I will leave the edited version of that playing at the end of the video so you can hear what I ended up with after making some minor adjustments to it. That is basically how I would go about 
making some ambient music starting from samples and it's a little bit rough at first so if you made it this far in the video thanks for watching and i hope you got something out of this and got some ideas for how you can turn your um, ideas that seem like bad ideas into ideas that sound pretty decent so uh, until next time happy music making